tell you, thank the Lord for his sweetness. A quick announcement. Uh, Anna is having a surprise party for Blake after church tonight with cake and ice cream. Everyone is welcome. So if you like cake and ice cream, you can take advantage of that. Amen. Blake, he's turned what? Nobody in here? He's, he's getting older, so let's pray for him. <laughs> but I want to turn your attention this morning, and, and I want to, I wish I could gather your attention to the fact that, that every time I preach, it, it, it's serious because it's God's Word. But I feel a sense of uh, uh, soberness this morning and a sense of seriousness that somebody would find they could be helped today. Today. And I want to read to you out of the Gospel of John, chapter 6. And like I said, please be back tonight. Brother and Sister Smith will be ministering, singing, preaching. Emily and Megan will be uh, singing. And, uh, uh, and Brother and Sister Smith, I, I love them. They're, just, they're wonderful people. I, some of my favorite to be around, even though they're a long way toward the west. And uh, here they live in a... And, and if you remember a while back, some of their family came and was with us in service. Uh, uh, just the sweetest people as could be, and uh, they enjoyed being here. We enjoyed having them, and just you, you can take you, you just bear witness with God's people. You don't have to have a show or a card or or tell what church you just know. And so they they were a blessing. Uh, and brother and sister Smith has always been a blessing wherever they've been. And so it's a privilege to have them, and they'll be blessing us tonight. So please call somebody, invite them. I'll guarantee you they won't be disappointed. But the Gospel of John, chapter number 6, here the Lord says, now I just want to read one verse for a theme, verse 67, John chapter 6, and it simply says this, Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? To the twelve. Now, over in Daniel chapter 1, one verse there. And I'm not looking for context, but I'm looking for a theme that runs truthfully toward all of God's people. We will have opportunity if we want to to leave. Yes, we will. Walk away from Christ. The devil's going to see to it that you have ample excuse to betray, to backslide, to just walk away. But Daniel in chapter 1, the last verse there, verse 21, I, I like the first three words. And I don't normally read the scripture like this, and you know it, but there's, I don't have time to read a context with the truth within it. It'd be a number of verses long. But the Bible said, Daniel chapter 1, verse 21, the first three words, and Daniel continued. And Daniel continued. I want to talk to you this morning how to continue. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the love of God. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, thank you for the life you've brought us into, surrounded by your presence. And the people of God, oh, Lord, you've enriched our lives so much. We stand, God, undeservingly. We stand awkwardly, Lord, of how good you've been to us. But we're thankful, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, this morning, oh, Lord Jesus, for the precious blood that has washed our sins away and for the love that you have placed within us, God, for the determination to please you, Lord. Thank you for the umbrella, oh, Lord, within it that has provisions and benefits and blessings, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to know you and to labor for you, Father. But, Lord, we need you this morning. Lord, reveal somebody's heart to them and encourage them and uplift them. And Lord, may the Holy Ghost minister to every heart today. Lord, uh, help us be strong, steadfast, and movable, abounding in your work, I pray. Don't, Lord, don't leave us alone. Don't let us give up. But stir our hearts to greater heights. And we need you, Lord, to do that. I ask you again to anoint me to preach to your people in Jesus' name, and everybody says with me, Amen. how to continue. It's not as easy done as it is said. Amen. Daniel here, 
we recognize was a great man. The Bible said uh, that the angel described him as one greatly beloved. The Bible also said that he was a man that no man could find fault with him. And the only one I read about being like that was Christ. So Daniel was a great man. He had qualities that are desirable. And Daniel brought to us a great understanding of end times and their events and their sequences here in Daniel about the times of the Gentiles. God used him in a great way. Now the, the, the apostles brought to us the word and the way of the New Testament through the gospels and the epistles. And, and very, so uh, these men that I read to you about, the twelve and Daniel, they were very instrumental in being used of God uh, to give us something of eternal value. These were important people. I'd rather a man give me something eternally value than temporarily valuable. I'd rather a man give me an opportunity to latch hold of something lasting than something that was come, going to come to an end. These men did it. I, I mean, we've been affected uh, in time and eternity uh, by their influence. We've been affected because they let God influence them to a degree that the Lord could pour through them what you and I desperately need in this hour. But, but, they came up against supreme struggle to get us what we desperately needed. These are great men. Now, now Daniel, listen, Daniel, I'm talking about how to continue. How not to give over to the excuses to quit living right and to turn your back on God in His way. Listen, if, if any man had an excuse, I could preach to you about a lot of men that had an excuse, Job. But God wound up blessing him twice full of what he already had. I could talk to you about Joseph. I mean, he was stripped down to nothing. He was a prisoner, forgotten by family. Uh, matter of fact, one brother wanted him murdered, forgotten by the people he had helped the most. Uh, he, and he'd been prophesied, so to speak, in a dream that this man, Joseph, was to do great things for God. But while he was in that prison, it just seems like God had forgotten about what he had told him. But the Bible tells us then God brought him out, hallelujah, to where he become the second greatest man in the conquering nation of that day. You know, God does not forget, church. Oh, we sometimes pressures can tell us he has or, or maybe we misunderstood him, but God does not forget and he knows how to clarify to us what he wants us to remember about what he said he would do, hallelujah. Daniel was stripped as a young boy, probably like some of these boys, similar in age. The Bible tells us that an enemy nation come in and separated him from his parents. Literally walked into their house, uh, laid hold on this young boy of theirs. As far as I know, I don't know if he ever saw his mom or dad again. The Bible teaches us that these apostles were stripped of their Savior. They saw him die on an old cross and put into a tomb. They couldn't understand this season. Matter of fact, they were hurt and confused and, and scared. But then all of a sudden they were in a room and, and guess who shows up just like that? He that was in that tomb that come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But then all of a sudden again, he, he starts ascending from the earth. And they're thinking, oh, Lord, no. He says, it's expedient that I go away. He says, if I go away, I'll send another comforter. He'll live in you. He'll testify of me. He'll walk with you as a paraclete. He'll comfort you in the most difficult times of your life. He said, fellas, I've got to go. But in like manner, I shall return. So he said, would you do this for me? Would you stay faithful to me? Would you work unto death? And if you will, there will be a crown of life. And matter of fact, 
I go away to prepare a place for you. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And where I am, ye shall be also. So he told him in the future there is there is such great things waiting on your agenda that I can't tell it to you because you couldn't comprehend it. But now, but in the now, I want you to stay faithful to me. You're not going to understand a lot of things that I let you go through. But I've not called you to understand everything. I've just asked you to trust me and I will greatly reward you for your faithfulness. You see, we've got to know how how to continue. Daniel and these apostles were hurt. Things that can penetrate deep into their emotion and their affection. It had happened. These were men who had been hurt. These are men who had been given scenarios and situations that if they'd let their mind run away from them and if they'd let their pain control them, they would not have endured uh, under the blessings of God to where you and I could recognize that through their faith. Faithfulness God gave unto them and they in return gave unto us and we have such a wonderful life based on that channel, amen? So today, these men come up against hardships, brother and sister. Their heart, it hurt. they got their feelings hurt. They were beaten. They could not understand why the heavens were brass sometimes. But I read where these men, as Daniel said, continued now I want you to listen to me this morning we got to guard our hearts because the enemy is going to give you ample excuse and leverage to quit serving God altogether at least how you know you should it's going to happen you're going to be able to sit down and think this should not have happened to me I don't deserve this I didn't do anything to call this upon me and because of it you're going to hurt sometimes you're going to be perplexed you're going to be without reason of understanding but I'll tell you something you'll never be without you'll never be without his presence hallelujah and if you'll turn your face hard to the wall as Hezekiah did and if you'll weep bitterly and sorely the Bible said that God began to promote a miracle toward him and extend his life I'm encouraging you this morning I don't understand his ways but I do understand his love hallelujah and I'm encouraging you you've got to to learn how to continue in the hour we're living in because if you don't you're going to stop short of the reward God has for you how to continue how did Daniel as a young boy not allow bitterness how did the apostles not allow fear intimidation I'll tell you how the same God that led them where they were was keeping them in the time they couldn't understand what was going on. You see, I, here's one thing you've got to remember if you're going to continue. That you have got to have a devotion that's already developed before the trying times. Daniel did not understand no doubt when his parents had come in here and say, no, you can't go out and do this. You've got to learn the ways of God. You've got to learn the noble ways of how that you give yourself to God. Your character will be developed. And the inward nature will be fashioned by God to do one thing. Always trust in Him and His goodness. You see, Daniel didn't know he was going to come across a day one day where the armies of the enemy would come in and strip him from his parents, strip him from his young adulthood, put him in bondage and slavery. He didn't have sign on the calendar that on this day you're going to go through such trauma and dramatic pain that it's beyond comprehension. He did not know it. But nonetheless it happened. But what do we see him doing? We see him changing not. Hallelujah. But we see that man staying faithful through his pain. Oh bless the name of the Lord. And we see him staying faithful through the problems. And when the pressure got turned on greater Daniel told him I I have purposed in my heart. I am not going to defile myself. Oh, church, how could a man stay that loyal? He was already devoted before the day.
day of evil came. I'm encouraging you this morning that one of the principles of learning on how to continue is this. You've got to be established now in the righteousness of Christ. You've got to let the blood, oh hallelujah, of Jesus Christ come down on you and save you and fix your heart to where once it was dark, now it's as white as the snow. I'm telling you, you can be saved this morning and no matter how bad that culture gets, there is peace under the redeemed. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We serve a mighty God who is our shield, who is our buckler, who is our soon coming king. And he said, I'm able to keep that which you committed unto me. If you're hurting this morning, if you're feeding off your pain, I'm telling you, turn. Oh, if you're bitter this morning, and if you've been engulfed in things, you say, preacher, I don't deserve this, I know, but you can't live off that time. You've got to rest on him. Let the Spirit of God minister to you this morning. Raise your hand and say, Lord, help me. Help me. Oh, I've seen people. The, listen, I can't understand why people get hurt like they do. In the sense, I know they do. But I can't see how they cope with it. Some of you sitting here this morning, you might have been mistreated. You might have been, you might right now, I know some of you are sick. I know some of you, your body has shaken with pain. For what reason? I don't know. But people have fasted for you. I've fasted. I've prayed. And I, you, I've been over at your house, Brother Charles, Brother Frank, where we prayed in the presence of God. Come down in that room and where Sister Carolyn was shaking with pain. She's able to go off to, and where Sister Ruth was sh- she's able to get up and walk around the house with a son. I'm telling you, God would come down. But then again, you go right back. I can't understand his ways. But what I do know, we are not alone hallelujah and I'm not not going to go to hell over a mystery but I'm going to stay close to the hand of my redeemer for one day all this trouble and sorrow all of this confusion will be swallowed up when he says well done thou good and faithful servant you've been faithful over a few things enter into the joys of the Lord I make you ruler over many the future is bright it always won't be like this. I don't I tell you, we've already determined it's January to be the month of prayer and fasting for a church. I'm going to be fasting and praying throughout that month and asking for God to save, to send revival, to heal your bodies, to keep your children. And believe it, that when I say it, he'll do it. But if it don't come within the time frame, I believe if God tarries and I'm still saved and pastoring here next year, I'll be labeling another month of fasting and prayer. Now I'll be praying for God to save. I'll be praying for God to heal and to keep because I know our future is brightly laden with the gifts of God. And like I preached last week, there'll come a time that we won't know it, but in 24 hours, our prayers will be answered. I'm encouraging you to continue. How do I continue? Continue, preacher. You've got to have a devotion already developed. <clears throat> I, I've got to skip over that. But if you don't have a devotion, deterioration will set in your, your drive, your fervency. You'll waver. But boy, I tell you, I, I look at Daniel, Brother Godfrey, and these uh, three Hebrew children, and... Uh, and uh, they said, if God don't deliver us, we ain't bowing. I read that and there's still, you know, hair on my neck won't stand up. Whew. I thought God made me like that in my heart. Because when those three Hebrew children come out of that thing, boy, things got turned around. And when you come out of this trial and pressure like gold, God is going to turn something around for the delight of your heart. Remain faithful, I, uh, I don't understand why 
<clears throat> Why people have to go what to go through? I, you know, I was over at Hawaii, and Brother Wade and Sister Sanders took a trip there. Beautiful place. My favorite place was the Pearl Harbor Memorial. Oh, that touched me. I don't know why. But one reason it's touched me, because we were over there during a tenure where December the 7th come on. And I, I told daughter, I said, I'm going to go out there before. I know I won't be able to go out there probably the day, but I'm going to go out there before, the day before something. And boy, I went out there, and there was just those veterans. <laughs> Man, I oh, I went out there on that old memorial. And there was that, I believe it was the, was it the Arizona. And that oil still coming up. I'd already been out there twice, but it was just tourist then. But it was covered up with men who had been there that day. I'm going to tell you, every one of those men saluted that flag. They weren't burning it. And every one of those men, they wore the red, white, and the blue, Brother Frank, their veterans' badge. And I watched those men. I got in behind them, and I, I watched them walk out to that boat, and it ferried us out to that memorial. And I watched those men, some of them still strong and distinct, some of them crippled and low. But every one of them, Brother Doug, when they got out on that thing, and they looked at that oil, and they, saw, they all leaned up against that wall. <laughs> and they wept. Because it was a season they experienced pain that was unbelievable. Knowing as they cried, there were skeletons in that ship that had never been unearthed, got caught off guard, didn't know it was coming. <clears throat> but I tell you what, those men, some of them said, I'd do it again. I'd do it again. Because embedded in that generation was a loyalty, was morality was avenues of existence that God could turn uh, riches out of rubble, hallelujah, and bring out of the ashes acclamation of adjustment. And I want to tell you that this morning, <clears throat> the church, we went through things, I think, God, why and where and when will it be? We went through seasons, nobody getting saved. Bother me to no end and why and where. But I'm here to tell you, I, I'd come here again. Hallelujah. Even if I knew the picture in 12, I'd come here again and I'd pray. Why? Because the cause is bigger than I am. Oh, and the ruler is bigger than my desire. I'm telling you this morning we've all had to weather some segment of the storm and the storm is still blowing against us today but I'm not going to let anything get in my heart uh, to get me to lose the focus uh, that there's a great day coming and the rewards will be handed out on the right and the left I'm going to stay faithful and just see what God will do with us until that day don't give up continue <clears throat> Speaking of Pearl Harbor, you can read about it. Mitsuo Fuchida was the commander of the Japanese Air Force. He led the squadron of 860 planes that attacked Pearl Harbor through those V's there that you can see at the Doyle Plantation. Leader of it hated the United States of America. Hated the Judeo-Christian philosophy and reveled in the day of temporary success. Jacob de Shazar was an American pilot. And he was eager to bounce back and to retaliate. He was a bomber pilot. And one day he led Brother Chuck a bomb, B-25 bombers, flew in to Japan and Nagoya and almost incinerated it. They woke up a sleeping giant. But on his last mission, his plane was shot down. He went into the Japanese prison war camps and he was abused in unmentionable ways. He was threatened every day with imminent death. Robot, uh, automatic weapons, 45, put to his head. Trigger cocked. And silence for as much as an hour at a time. 
just feeling the cold barrel of that pistol cocked right up to the base of his skull. <sighs> Wouldn't let him sleep. <clears throat> but somehow or another, he got a Bible. The Shazar wasn't saved. We serve a God that has always specialized in reaching into intense darkness, turning it into marvelous light. He can do it for you this morning. If you're here without hope and you're back against the wall, I know somebody like the old black preacher in the Delta. He said, I don't hate the white man. I don't hate the black man. I don't hate the yellow man. I don't hate the red man. I done fell in love with that man. <laughs> That's what you gotta do. And everything else begins to fall into place. This morning you got to fall in love with him for the first time if you're not saved. Or if you're here and the battle's getting the bad, best of you and you're getting bitter or you're tormented or confused. Re-fall in love with that man. He can clean the slate again. But the Shazar had made up his mind. He was going to do everything he could to bring vengeance to this nation, to these people. But he began to read the Bible because he's being tortured so much that anything of sanity appealed to him. He started Genesis and he read it through the Bible numbers of times. And finally, he reread on June the 8th, Romans 10 and 9. And he said, just felt like something broke up in me. And I laid on that old concrete floor and all of that decadence. And he said, I asked the Lord to save me. And he said, it felt like the ocean erupted in that place. And he said, it wasn't clean, but I was. He said, and the first thing I did was I started smiling to my guards. God began to tell me through his love to be tender. And he said, those guards began to be mystified and confused. And, and right before I was released, they began to be nice to me. And he said, I made a purpose. He said, God, at one time I had such hatred that I had made a covenant with myself that even if I had to come back by myself, I was going to kill as many of these people as I could. But he said, Lord, if you'll let me come back, I'll see to it. I'll give my life to you to where you can save as many of them as you can. And sure enough, the Shazar was released. <coughs> Hallelujah. He went back into the United States. <coughs> Things calmed down. A number of years, he went back to Japan <coughs> as a missionary. Formed a church. <laughs> Formed a church. He put out a little pamphlet, a tract that said, uh, it, it talked about the man that hated Japan. And, and they come, and he talked about how he was a prisoner of the Japanese. And they said they wanted to hear a man that used to hate that now loved. And he began to develop churches and villages. It was unbelievable. He said he began to work with missionary alliances, and one of them was ran by Glenn Wagner. And Glenn Wagner said, he, he called him one day, talking with him, meeting me at a certain place. He said, Jacob, I want you to meet a man who has uh, 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 gotten saved, and, and he feels like God's called him into the ministry, and he said he might be able to work with you or work for you. So DeShazar went up, and, and sure enough, he met this man. They began to talk, and DeShazar in the conversation said, this, this Japanese man said, he all of a sudden hit his knees and he began to weep and he began to cry and he began to thank God for the love of God the forgiveness and the mercy of God for this Japanese man had not told him who he was but all of a sudden this, this man was Mitsuo Fuchida the commander of that Japanese Air Force that had led 860 the Lord had saved that man and had called him to evangelism he was doing the best he could do to preach out in the area to get people saved all of a sudden when the Shazar recognized he said the bigness of God flooded my heart and he said what a savior we serve he said him and Mitsuo embraced and they cried and they wept when Mitsuo recognized the Shazar was an American bomber. Oh, they sat there and praised the Lord. They began to ask for a fresh anointing of unity and desire to witness and desire. Oh, church, I'm here to tell you the man, the God that I'm preaching about this morning is not rejected by darkness, cannot be refused by the tactics 
petition of hell. But all you need to say is, yes, Lord, I'll let you save me. I'll let you cover my family. Lord, I'll let you dig deep and get all this bitterness out. Get all of this hurt out. Let me start over again. And I'll st- I will continue, Lord. That's what it's all about. Giving God an opportunity to take you a little further. The power of beyond is at your grasp this morning. Will you take hold of it? I'm here to tell you, God can give you fruit. God will give you fruit if you'll order your footsteps in a soft way before his presence. Won't you raise your hand right now? I think you know how the Holy Spirit's saying you need help. I'm not preaching down to you either, church. I'm trying to pull you up. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I don't want you there. But this preacher can't prevent hard things happening to your heart and your mind. And I've seen too many people slowly but surely walk away. Without fail, I've seen them go through heartache. Some of it they think hidden to me, but known. I think, oh God, why did they get there this morning? What's being offered to you? Maybe not so much he'll clean up the environment that's bothering you. But he'll reach down in you. And erase the effect that that environment has had. To where you can say, Lord, I don't know how it's going to turn out. But Lord, here I am. You mow me the way. I remember when I was a sinner, I was like these men, the Japanese man, the American man, had great animosity. Both of them was an enemy of God. I remember when I was an enemy of God. Brother North, yeah, I was a sinner. And if you don't know the Lord, the Bible says we are an enemy of God. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I began to recognize that because wasn't nothing going for me. It seemed like everything fell away. But it was God. Getting my effect, attention to gain my affection. But church, when I got saved, I understand what DeShazar was talking about. I was surrounded by a terrible mess of an atmosphere. He didn't clean that atmosphere up, Brother Steve. But uh, but I'll tell you what. When he got through with me, I was pearly white. The atmosphere looked so different. I thought, God, help me to help them. 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 Because I remember as a sinner, I was running off a lot of resentment. My life just didn't turn out like I wanted to. I was aggravated or frustrated, bitter and mad at the world as a sinner. I was just angry. But it wasn't God's fault. It was mine because I'd rejected him. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, this preacher's telling you, oh, what an opportunity you have today to come to know this one and turn it all around. Because first of all, he'll turn you around and give you hope. Preach, you don't know how much I've been hurt and frustrated. I know. And if you were to tell me, I couldn't change what's already been done, even though I wish you'd never went through it. But I can help you change today, forever. That's a good opportunity. How to continue. Didn't finish. Matter of fact, just got to one point. That's terrible. That's just like a preacher, though. But the point I'm trying to get across is that if you want it to be, that can be a better beyond than the past has ever been.
what a Savior. Oh, the tenderness. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. This preacher, I, I will never embarrass you. Won't humiliate you. But I'd be your worst enemy if I didn't give you an opportunity to know the Lord today. You say, Brother Norris, I feel so awkward and I feel not scared, but I feel unsettled. You know what that is? That's the Spirit of the Lord convicting you. And what that means is he's convincing you that you've been wrong. But if you'll let him this morning, he'll make things right by making you right. If you'll come and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me and cleanse me. I'm a sinner. Deliver me from my sin and come and live within me and help me to serve you. Friend, Jesus will make a new creature out of you. Old things will pass away. Behold, all things will become new. <laughs> say, not for me, Brother Norris. I'm telling you, he's no respecter of persons and he'll save you. If you're here today, this preacher's not going to come back and scare you. But I'm giving you an opportunity for prayer. and to be. If you're here and say, Brother Norris, pastor, preacher, I just, you know, I feel the sense that I want to get saved because I need to, but I want to get saved to help my family too. If you're here this morning and you feel the Spirit of the Lord dealing with you, whether it be a young person, young adult, middle age, and you say, Brother Norris, I want to be saved, here's what I want you to do right now, and I'm not going to embarrass you. But I want you to slip your hand up and put it right back down. Real quick. Just slip it up so I can know who to pray for. And so you can make a show unto the Lord that you're serious. If you want to be saved and have the Lord help you attain a life that you can't create yourself, slip your hand up. You don't have to go to hell, friend. God can help you. Slip your hand up if you want to be saved this morning. And put it right back down. Real quick. Slip it up. Anyone, the Lord's calling you. Don't reject Him. Don't push this off. Don't say, I'll do it later. Do it now. Today is the day of salvation. Let Him save you this morning, friend. Young, young man, young lady, mom, dad, grandpa, grandma, whoever you are. Let Him save you. And you'll never regret it. Anybody, put that hand up. Put it right back down. And this preacher will meet with you and pray with you and help you and do the best I can to see you loved of God. Anybody this morning. All right. If you're here and say, Brother Norris, uh, I know what you're preaching about because uh, I'm a, you know, Brother Norris, I'm saved. But you know, the older I get, it, it becomes more clear and I get more serious with the fact that I just need to be more yielded to God in some areas of my life that I find it hard to be. I don't know how to do this, Brother Norris. I don't know how to start it. And, and, and I, don't, I don't want confusion to reign in my mind. But, Brother Norris, I've been in such seasons of pain that you really don't understand how I've been affected. Friend, I believe you. I do. I know you're being honest. Honesty is not going to be the complete healer in your life. But if you'll yield yourself this morning, God will work for you. He'll help you. And you know me, if you need help and I can help you, I'll help you. But I'm here to tell you that there's a person here that can do the complete job. It's the presence of our Lord. But if you hear as a Christian, say, Brother Norris, would you pray for me throughout the days and weeks to, that I know how to begin to yield this area of my life. Brother Norris, I don't want to be aggravated or frustrated. I don't want to be fearful or bitter. Yes, yes. Slip, any, slip that hand. Yes. Just anybody else, slip that hand up. I'm not going to embarrass you or call you out either. But to the Lord, Brother Norris, I don't know what to do to get this started. i tell you what to do. Set a season aside where you say, Lord, I'm going to find a secret place. And I'm going to get away from the busyness of the world. I'm going to get away from everybody for a while. Except you. And Lord, I don't know how long I'm going to stay, but when I get there, would you be there? And Lord, I'm going to pray. I'm going to stay soft and humble in your prayer. And Lord, would you begin to help me in this area? And church, I'm here to tell you, he in no wise will cast you out. He'll help you. Let's stand this morning.
this might seem odd, but if, you, if you're here and you say, Brother Norris, I, I need special prayer. Come on up. We'll pray for you physical-wise. And I'm not really speaking to those that have raised their hands, but if you're here and you say, Brother Norris, there's another dimension that I need help in. We, we want you to have prayer this morning. Walk on up here. We'll pray for you right now. Okay? But I tell you what, you that raised your hand as well as didn't, you say, you know, would God honor a little step this morning, Brother Norris? He would. <laughs> He would. The master's crumbs. If there's any area of your life that say, Lord, this might be small, but I'm pure within it. If you, if you just say, Brother Norris, I need God in an area I can't do nothing with. I'm not saying I'm a sinner, and a, but I just know I need help. If you didn't raise your hand, and if you did, let's close the service this way. Why don't you step out in the aisle, and we'll say a closing prayer and prayer for you. And we'll ask God to honor this is the beginning. But if you did raise your hand, you didn't. And you would like to do this. You feel prompted. Step out in that aisle. And we're going to believe God to do something new and fresh in your life. To where you'll continue. And you'll have fruit more than you've ever had. Daniel had more fruit. The apostles had more fruit. Because it's still being added to their account. Every time somebody gets saved. Or somebody says, add another one. Add an yes, sir. Anybody here, you say, Brother Norris, I'm just stepping out in the aisle today to say the Lord. Lord, this is small, but you know what I'm talking about, Lord. Help me. God bless Caleb. Honest young man right here. Yeah. I'm not saying you got secret sin. I, I don't know what you've got, but I know that you're saying, Oh, Lord, I need you. Need you. There you go. God bless these sisters. Sinner, Sister Anita. Sister, these are good people. Uh, yes. God bless this young lady. Praise the Lord. Someone else. Oh, friend, I, I just felt an urgency this morning to give this a call. That God has got to be on for you if you'll choose to continue. And let it start this morning. Just slip out of the pew. Just stand in that aisle. Say, Lord, here, here I am. I'm coming, Lord. I'm yielding, Lord. But help me be complete in my yielding. Anyone else before we pray? Tell you what, sisters, look over there to my left. There's sisters there. Sisters here. Young men, take a look over here. Young ladies over here. I can't see them on the side. But look around. And you say, preacher, I need to pray myself. I tell you what, come to these altars. Just come up here and find a place to pray. If you're not praying with some of these in the house, please find a place to pray. Whether it be in these altars or in those seats. I, I want to continue. I want my family to continue. I want this church to continue. That's right. Let's pray, church.